We've been wanting to come to Shapeways for a while. And when I heard they were finally building a factory here in New York, I wanted to check it out. This space that you see here is about to hold 30 to 50 3D printers. And they have some printers here that they're using right now and shipping out product with. I'm John Biggs, this is TechCrunch Makers, and let's take a look at Shapeways. So we've been planning to come to Shapeways for a long time. Shapeways makes great stuff like this. They 3D print all sorts of things from Minecraft uh, trees to bracelets to hats, all sorts of great stuff. I'm here with Pete Weimershausen. Uh, this co-founder and CEO of Shapeways. We're going to walk through his brand new factory here in Queens, really. Yep. So what is this room? So uh, what happens here is after people order their great products, um, we need to make sure we can print them. And we need to assess whether we can make it. And then after that, we need to start putting those parts into the machines. Okay. And then we call it the planning process. And um, depending on the material, nice and a very involved process where we try to cram as many parts as possible into the machine to make the, the price as good as possible for our users. And that's what you see happening over here. So the, so the machines, we're going to see those in a second, but they're like a box. Yes. And you're printing the pieces inside the box, and what you're doing here is sort of like layering them so they don't touch each other. And uh, of course the easy thing is to put one part into the machine, print it, and then put another part mm -hmm. in. But then you would be very inefficiently using the machine, which of course drives up the cost. Okay. And as we want to make uh, our technology as affordable as possible so people get great prices, you know, we need to cram in as many parts as possible into the machine. Mm -hmm. So these guys make sure that that happens. And what are we printing here? What materials? Um, we print in um, our white strong and flexible material and uh, all the other nylon based materials. And we also have a high definition plastic material. As people use it more and more and we understand how to do it ourselves, uh, we are going to do more materials here. Yes. Right. So let's see how they get from that to this. These machines are the, the nylon printers. Okay. They're laser centers, means they use a laser to melt the powder together, which gives really high definition uh, products. Um, the machines are actually quite expensive. They're industrial type 3D printers. Okay. They range in price from somewhere around 150,000 to a million dollars. All right. So the, the printer that I'm familiar with is sort of like, it's like a tube that squeezes stuff out and makes a little object. Yep. But this makes hundreds of objects at once, essentially. So what you see here is that the machine is building the parts layer by layer. Um, and um, every time you deposit a new layer of powder, the laser centers the powder together where the parts come. So the parts are actually sliced in very thin layers and those layers have to be added together. The box is completely filled with powder and products. Then it needs to cool down because it's at um, around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we need to let them cool down, and then we go to the, the next stage, which is the depowering. All right, let's take a look. Yep. So after the, the machine is ready, the big tray that contains now the powder and the finished parts is moved over here so it can cool down, and here you have one of those trays. It's actually sort of a, the material's right here, and it's sort of it's hardened itself. It's, it's, why is it cracked like that? Um, that's because it's cooling down, and it was warm, so it's warm powder. Um, and sometimes it, uh, it, it, uh, it gels a little bit because of the heat, mm -hmm. but if you just touch it, it falls apart. But the nylon itself is not going to shrink over time? No, 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 no. After it's done, it's done. All right, so you stuff it in this machine over yep. here. When it's cooled down enough, you put the whole thing, you sink it into this box here, and then you raise the, the bottom of the, of the tray, and then the powder comes up together with the parts. The powder itself is brushed into this uh, location here, and the parts are collected, um, uh, and they uh, go for further processing. So it's almost like archaeology. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting okay. things out of the dust. Yep. So we've got, these, we've got these white parts. How do we get them colorful? Yeah, that's the next step. Perfect. So after the parts are uh, extracted from the, from the tray, they still might contain a little bit of uh, plastic uh, dust. And you need, to wanna, you, you need to wanna take it off. So with compressed air, oh, wow. uh, you clean them. So after the parts are identified and, and, and clean, some parts go to our customers white, so then they go into the shipping that will go to next. But some uh, customers like color, um, I do. So here you have a part that is uh, nice and um, blue. And how do we do that? We have this setup over here. So this is like Easter eggs? Yes, almost, yep. Of course we scale this up over time to become more and more industrial. But uh, basically we put them in dye. It needs to be warm, so the dye sticks better. And uh, the parts become uh, nice and blue. Mm -hmm. So after we get them printed, dyed, and beautiful, what happens next? Well, we need to get them to our customers as fast as possible. All right, let's take a look. Yep. The shipping process happens here. So what you can see over there are lots and lots of boxes where we have identified parts. 
all those boxes are coded, so we know what parts are in them. And then when the order is complete, it goes onto these tables. And then every day we ship around 600 boxes. Coming out of this factory itself? Yep. And what about worldwide? Um, it's another five to 600 in, in Eindhoven, so that's a large number. And in terms of orders per month, what would you estimate at this point? Um, it's uh, definitely over 10,000. Oh, wow. Yep. We've built a, an amazing system. The team has done an amazing job um, of building a system that gives us everything digital. So everything is tracked in a database. Uh, we use scanners to identify barcodes, etc., etc., all to reduce error, all to reduce work and mistakes, and um, to get um, you know um, our customers their stuff. All right, excellent, thanks very much. This is the first time that we've come to a factory that's brand new, so it's really interesting to see how this is all going to expand over the years. So we'll head back and, uh, and visit you again. Cool, right. awesome. So thanks oh. a lot, Pete. And yep. let's thank the guys. Great having the Shapeways. you. Shapeways. These are the Shapeways guys over yep. here. That's the team. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. <laughs> I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch Makers. Thanks for watching.